my dad loved the Lord, and um, he just was very open about his faith, um, and he was never ashamed to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with anybody he came into contact with, and his co-workers nicknamed him the Rev. And it, was, it wasn't out of reverence. It was, um, they were making fun of him and being sarcastic. And, um, but he was the guy that they always came to for prayer or um, just for advice or someone to talk to. He worked at the World Trade Center, and um, he was a bond broker there. And he worked there for over 20 years. I worked at a Christian school, Cornerstone Christian School, up in uh, New Brunswick in uh, North Jersey. And uh, that morning, um, it was an ordinary day for us, and I went to work. Um, and I was actually in the middle of teaching a Bible class to my second graders. And a secretary came in and said that um, my husband was on the phone, and it was an emergency. We have something that has happened here at the World Trade Center. We noticed flame and an awful lot of smoke from one of the towers of the World Trade Center. We are just coming up so, on uh, this So I ran to the phone and uh, picked it up, and my husband, Sean, had mentioned that uh, a plane had just hit my father's building. And he worked for the Tower One. He was the pl first plane to hit the building and the second plane to come down. You're looking at a live picture of the World Trade Center where we have just received word that a plane apparently has crashed into the tower. So um, when I heard that the plane hit, I tried to get into contact. I called my dad's office. I couldn't get through. I called my mom and my family, and I, I couldn't get through right away. And eventually I did get through to my mom. And my mom has a heart condition. She had a heart attack um, in 2000, in February 2000. And um, she was just really uh, like upset, and she just wanted me to come home. So I came right home to her. And um, we just, we didn't want her to watch the TV or the news. or So I was actually, when I was on my way home, I was listening to the radio, and I heard that one of the towers had just collapsed. And I was just pleading and, and begging God just to um, just to let my dad be okay and just to bring him back home safely to us and um, when I got home we found out that the second tower had collapsed and um, eventually we, we you know told my mom and um, we just knew that night that he wasn't going to come home because my dad he survived the first bombing um, and he had come home that night. I mean, it took him a long time to come home, but he did. And we know if he were to come home, he would have done anything just to, you know. There was a man who worked for Cantor Fitzgerald. And uh, he was on his way to work that morning. And he was um, actually running late. And he saw the plane hit the building. And he actually got into contact with my mother afterwards and told her that he called the office right after it happened and he did get into contact with somebody in the office and they said that um, Al Braca just jumped on the table and said I'm going to heaven who's coming with me and then after that there was numerous uh, phone calls and emails from different people saying that the Rev um, had a bunch of people people about like 50 people in a circle and they were holding hands praying so um, it must have been a wonderful day for some of those people because we don't know um, how many people went to heaven that day because of, um, you know, what my dad did. He just, he stayed strong in his faith even to the very end. Well, it's definitely changed my outlook on life and um, Every day I wake up and we don't know what's going to happen. Our life is a vapor and we never know when it's going to be our last day. And um, I just want to live for the Lord and I just want to do whatever God wants me to do. I want to be a vessel for Him. I know that that day was a divine appointment. And I know that my dad had to be there that day at that very hour to, to witness to people and to share, share the gospel of Christ at that moment.